Ah, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Pony Express Radio, episode two. I'm joined by a full panel of uh, people to discuss uh, the goings on today. Uh, we'll get started right here at the top with uh, Mr. Raging Mandrel making his return. How are you, sir? I'm very well. Glad to be on again. Thanks again. Indeed. And next we got um, Charlemagne. How are you doing this evening, sir? Still hot. I hope it rains tomorrow. It's supposed to rain tomorrow. Please rain. Please rain. Yeah, that'd be nice. Next we got uh, Mr. P. Quinones. How are you, sir? Doing great. Doing great. Glad to be here. Yeah, excellent. Always a pleasure uh, to have you on. And our guest this evening is uh, Luth Templar. How are you, sir? Close. Almost got Ail Templar. Oh, almost. But, uh, no, yeah. Yeah. Also known yeah. as Cringe Walker. Yes, it's about to rain here, so maybe we'll send some over to Charlie. Yeah, indeed. Well, gentlemen, uh, we are here once again to talk about uh, the news, uh, you know, the week that was here. So we might as well just get right into it here. And guys, I don't know about you, but I've heard nothing nonstop about the uh, superconductors. And somehow this is connected to uh, the aliens that we were talking about uh, last week here. It's secret alien technology, and it's about to change all of our lives in the most radical way possible. It's the greatest invention since the printing press. So we had to have cringe walker on here to tell us about all these superconductors so let's jump right into it here sir what are we missing with this story walk us through it here uh well the the background is that there was a publication i i think by this team or a team that they're studying uh back in i think maybe 2019 or 2020 it was in nature uh nature magazine or or the the scientific publication peer reviewed and then later it was retracted. It was found that the data was basically made up. <laughs> Oops. Uh, it was reintroduced. Um, now, when I say made up, what happened is that they found out that the graphs in the paper were plagiarized from a previous article. So it's not clear if that was because a scientific team cheated or if the, the publishers just messed up the files. Either way, it was, it was withdrawn. However, the materials, ingredients, and st steps for construction, which is, I think it's y YK99 or something, I forget, um, YL99, I, I can't remember it, but um, it was some teams reported that the material had some properties when they tried to replicate it. And so it was republicized uh, in nature uh, and, and I think also withdrawn a second time as well. So it's been in and out of the peer review process as lazy magazines don't don't bother peer reviewing, even though they say they do. And then actual peer reviewers are like, hey, this doesn't work or hey, this is wrong or that. Uh, a, a team in South Korea decided to cook up the ingredients and simulate it. And there's a video going around of them showing partial superconductivity, which is usually displayed by the levitation effect, the mes which is like a product of the Mesner effect. Uh, the scientific background is um, a superconducting material will eject a magnetic field out of itself. And this uh, shell of a magnetic field will keep it levitating. Or it will also go through the pores of the material and, and latch on, kind of like a like it's grabbing a physical thing. There's a lot of weird properties that aren't fully understood yet, and people are still trying to understand how it does this. Essentially, the the material seems to act like a single object uh, at, at a in a molecular way. Like imagine if you had a hundred molecules pretend like they're one molecule, and so their interactions with the world are as if they are one molecule, but with the mass of one hundred molecules. So there's a lot of weird conky stuff that happens with that. Um, but the South Korean team showed promising results. They published the video of the thing half floating. They said it might not be fully floating because either they, they messed up the ingredients or it's not fully known and they should try to perfect the process. But uh, th that's the current place of what it is. What a superconductor actually is useful for is that it, it can transmit electricity without resistance, which basically means you don't get any heat loss, which, which means like you, you have a Let's say you have a nuclear power plant on like North America and you sent through a superconductor wire to Europe, there's no loss of, of the electrical power. There's no heat loss. The material, the, the energy is perfectly transmitted along the superconducting material, which is really cool because you can do all kind of crazy stuff like that. I, right off the given mark, you have a lot more efficiency in how much energy you can transport. You can, um, quote unquote, wor worry less about climate change because you're le setting out less heat, all that green stuff that they talk about but the really cool stuff about it the like the really cool stuff that a room temperature uh superconductor can do is because it can manipulate magnetic fields and almost grab them like they're physically thing things there 
Uh, a properly calibrated superconductor could theoretically replace rockets and just gracefully lift up into space using the Earth's magnetic field. This would this is like a tall ask. It, it probably would end up not being the actual Earth's magnetic field, but rather something like an artificially generated magnetic field on Earth that the craft would would basically use to push itself up to resist gravity. Uh, not anti-gravity, but creating a force counteracting gravity. So gravity is still there, but it's just you can overcome it easier. That's the dream of superconducting materials for, for space transport. That's a brief overview. I think I think it's good enough to go with that. Yeah, indeed. Um, I'm sure a lot of people, including myself, uh, people in the audience are not too familiar uh, with this field at all. So it's always nice to have um, an expert opinion here. So um, what exactly does this um, story mean for us as we stand you know, right here, right now in uh, 2023? Is this like a bunch of smoke and mirrors nonsense that you know is misdirection from something else? Does it actually look like we're going to have something fairly uh, substantial here? You know, uh, are we actually going to have some degree of impact on our day to day lives uh, from the story? Do you think? Not, not anytime soon, but it, it could potentially be useful in like five to ten years of development and perfection. This is like discovering E equals MC squared. You're still like thirty years away from the nuclear bomb. Hmm. Interesting, indeed. Um, anybody else um, uh, have any questions or um, uh, uh, lines of? Uh... You know, uh, interesting points I want to bring up uh, with the story here. Yeah, um, I, I have one question. What's the likelihood that an, a superconductor actually gives us like an event horizon scenario? You mean like oh, like can we a open lot? a portal to hell? That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, one of the potential interesting uses of manipulating magnetic fields is is accidentally creating a monopole. Uh, and a monopole would, would, would be like a bubble of magnetic, magnetic energy that you could theoretically latch a superconducting probe onto, throw it at the sun and let a solar flare, throw it at the speed of light to some other solar system. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> could you uh, explain that in slightly more detail? Uh, wait a minute, it, wait a minute, wait, cool wait a minute. What's a superconductor? <laughs> um, so sorry, just, what's, a, what's a monopole? Uh, people uh, are not going to know what that is. Yeah. So, so, so if you have a magnet, there's a north pole and a south pole, and the magnetic field lines. If you like, if you throw met, met, metal powder onto the magnet, you'll see like loops of magnetic fields pulling the wire into a loop from the north pole to the south pole, and that that typically is is um, like a representation of magnetic field. Uh, the idea of a monopole would be that it only has a north or a south pole, so it just puts all of its energy into the repulsion or or attraction, depending on what you're using it for. Uh, they're they're mathematically possible, but but not practically possible to exist in reality without a whole lot of fancy physics. But if you could manipulate a magnetic field using a superconductor, you theoretically could draw it into a kind of bubble or a loop of magnetic energy that would be technically a monopole, but not really. Uh, this would basically form a bubble that could then be like layered onto for for different applications with other magnetic fields you can think of a magnetic bubble almost like um you know it's one of the reasons why a solar flare accelerates away from the sun rather than going at a constant velocity uh it, it repulses off the magnetic fields of the, of the sun and it bounces off because it's a magnetic bubble that has its own world of charges and so that bubble in a solar flare will will, will almost seemingly accelerate initially um and just fl fl fling itself at like near the speed of light off, out into the solar system so if you had a magnetic bubble and a superconducting probe that could protect itself in that bubble, you would have a means of throwing a probe at the speed of light at another star. You you wouldn't oh, be able to okay. you wouldn't be able to control the direction, of course. You just wherever the solar flare will go. Sure, maybe if you had uh, enough monopoles attached to some sort of a uh, spacecraft, though, it could uh, you know manipulate its its uh, direction slightly and get somewhere useful. Yeah, and, and that's uh, there's a YouTuber, Angry Astronaut, who explores this a lot in terms of the practical science of it. I say monopole, but it's really a, a loop. A, a true monopole would be like a magnetic laser that would be really cool, but not. I don't think it actually exists in reality. But these loops can kind of kind of like interact in a parallel function to whatever magnetic field lines they interact with. Um, I'm not sure if I, anything I said made sense, but the the guy on YouTube does a great job of, of showing it in a visual sense. Uh, he, he thinks that a practical craft using room temperature superconductors could get to Mars in like 
like 16 weeks or something bouncing mag- like you know magnetic field to magnetic field off the sun uh yeah so we use superconductors now but they have to be cooled to ridiculously low temperatures to to superconduct right what are what yeah. are some of the applications that we're using superconductors for right now uh well right now it's mostly used in scientific experiments trying to like explore the physics of it i think some monorail systems try to use it but i don't know if they they actually do it might be like a an or i'm not familiar with with how monorails use it but it's not really in the mainstream right now because it is very even though nitrogen is cheap it's still like a hefty cost to constantly replenish liquid nitrogen right uh, i'm sure it's used i'm sure it's used in some fields though i'll look it up real quick so you, you mean in uh, monorail trains yeah, like uh, like a train would use this to float, like a float a, mag- a magnet a magnet train. You could use superconductors in that to have a, a a train that has a lot less resistance, a lot less heat heat loss to energy, and so the train would be able, would be able to travel further with less energy. Okay, so that would be like one of the um, practical applications that people would see with a room temperature superconductor. Uh, yeah. W- what's something else? I mean, if if you can if you have a superconductor that you can use in your computers, would you be able to make much faster or maybe much larger supercomputers because they wouldn't be uh, subject to uh, heat buildup because the yeah, electricity it, wouldn't be... Imagine overclocking a computer and it generated no heat. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah, that, that makes total like... sense. What, yeah, what, do you, do you th- what do you think of the political implications of this? Like if Globo Homo actually had a uh, superconductor at room temperature that could be mass produced for, um, you know, a reasonable price. Like, I guess that's another aspect, too, is I don't know how much this material costs to produce, even if it is room temperature. But like, what, what would be the political implications of that? Well, we, we definitely have a, a foot in the door of regaining a lot of the scientific dominance, but we don't really have the competency to actually do it. <laughs> like we, we'd have the tools to do it, but it, it'd be like a like a like a monkey discovers a gun in the woods, but doesn't know how to use it, right? Like it, it, it might even know it's a gun, but has no idea how to use it. Like it might have seen other like hum, like humans using the gun, but like I have this gun, I don't know how to use it. What am I gonna do? So like discovering this puts us like we could do all kinds of stuff from from supermassive particle accelerators that that are super efficient and can discover new physics. Uh, they they beat CERN with superconductors really well. Or you could have like a like a mag- magnetic gun that doesn't generate heat and uses uses electricity efficiently, so it could like do a lot of ma- magnetic weaponry. Um, and anything involving magnets, you're just looking at la- at a far more efficient magnet with no heat loss or heat generation and a lot more precision. So if it uses magnets, you now have a a means to do it very precisely and and with less loss of heat. Do we have like um any extreme risks of like a uh, danger uh, using this kind of stuff? I mean, you know, I'm a complete luddite uh, when it comes to this field, but I mean, you know, uh, we've got issues with uh, nuclear reactors um, from time to time that could be uh, pretty catastrophic. Um, is there anything that you uh, would see that be immediately, you know, should raise some red flags here? You know how a solar flare it starts as that little shiny speck and then suddenly explodes to something bigger than the Earth many multiple times over. Like, like you ever you ever watch a solar flare like develop and charge yeah, yeah. itself and then release? So what's happening there is that a a very strong magnetic field is is getting knotted up in twists and, and turns and and by doing that storing more electricity uh, in the form of electrons as the um oh did, did I lose connection? No 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 you're still here we got you. Oh so, sorry I'm looking at the the the, the background it's anyway um. So what's happening there is that the as the sun prepares to release a solar flare, it's using these magnetic uh, magnetic field lines to store electricity, knot them up, kind of like DNA knots up information. And the same way the electrons get knotted up in the field lines, and as the field lines twist and turn, they can carry a greater bulk mass of, of energy. Uh, a superconductor could do that with a lot less heat. And so you can imagine if you're if – you're, let's say you want to do fusion energy – you can use uh, manipulation of, of magnetic field lines without heat loss to, to kind of like prepare a huge charge that will fuse uh, molecules or even split them for fission. Uh, if you have an incompetent person managing the computer systems there or not programming it right, you could probably get a really 
knotted up mess of field of magnetic field lines that would effectively supercharge themselves and blow up in a in a vast explosion. Uh, that would be pretty. That would be like you've seen how big of, of an explosion a solar flare can cause. Because because you can think of a magnetic field line as a spring and how twisted up it is as as like the energy that's stored up in the spring. In the same way as the magnetic field line twists and knots, it's it's being filled with electrons f- flowing along it. And once that has a catastrophic failure and releases all the energy releases at once in one singular, very high voltage uh, electrical burst. Which, in theory, if there's well, if there's anyone in the room, they're dead. They're not just dead; they're like turned to, to like dust. But if this is in like like some kind of like open area, all the all the electrical lines that go along. Um, so remember how I said electrical wires would not lose any energy due to heat loss. If we're talking about normal copper lines, this catastrophe would be limited to the facility because the heat loss would would basically melt the wires. Without that heat loss, that catastrophic breakdown of the magnetic field lines transmits the energy down the zero heat loss wires to to wh- whoever is using it at the other end so you can imagine fucking up a power plant using this technology if, if the power lines are, are superconducting everybody attached to that that grid is gonna get like like blasted with enough radiation to kill them <laughs> sorry sorry to black uh, so, on that one ah uh, so fantastic so we have absolutely nothing to worry about is what you're telling me and we have the best yeah. top men working on this um right now and absolutely nothing yeah, yeah, top men are working on it right now, and we have uh, absolutely nothing to fear, and we all are going to be living in the Jetsons' uh, future utopia yeah. any minute now, indeed. Yeah. Um, so I suppose um, you're definitely going to be keeping an eye on um, uh, this one. Uh, yeah, yeah. For sure. Uh, um, what do you think about the um, – you know, I've seen some ridiculous takes uh, – well, what I perceive to be ridiculous takes going around saying that this is somehow connected to the um, – aliens uh story that we were hearing coming out of uh congress um from last week that oh man this is the secret uh alien technology i knew him uh, uh robert seffer if you guys are familiar with him this is one of his takes <laughs> that was going around on um, uh, twitter is like yeah this is uh something connected with the uh, aliens and now they're just patenting the alien technology that they've now found what do you think about that well, i don't want to dominate the show's airtime but i mean like i said this this stuff was initially published like i think a year before robert grush did any of his investigations for Congress. So it, it it's earlier than that, basically. It's like an older release of information. Uh, the Plus the labs actually doing this research are like international. They're not bound by U.S. defense contracts. That like the research is in Russia and Korea and America. It's it's not like, it, it's not, it doesn't seem to be any under any protection. Mm. Or C- Speaking or, of or that, it's, uh, <laughs> it's published in Nature. One thing I think that is worth bringing up is... Uh, there's there's two journals that are sort of king in science, which are just nature and science. Uh, and these are very old, founded in like the mid 1800s, nature in 1869. And uh, there has actually been misconduct in nature before uh, from the sort of copy pasting graphs from previous studies things. Uh, like even getting into nature at all is a huge achievement. Um, these are extremely prestigious. So if there is misconduct going on in those journals again, um, that really says a lot about, you know, must science because uh, people people have this concept that, you know, we can just reference science as this meta concept of truth. But when that when the two major journals that are, quote unquote, the science are uh, have actual misconduct happening in them and, and no one's noticing um, if that's happening here again, that would be a huge deal. Yeah, uh, indeed. Well, it's a good thing that we've got, um, uh, you know, sharp guys in our uh, corner of the internet here that uh, on our side of things that can keep us updated on all these things, because there's just way too much knowledge going around in the world for one person to have. So it's important for us to have these uh, little networks and stuff of here of people who are skilled in their own uh, respective fields here uh, to round up all this kind of information. Um, does anybody else have anything to say on the um, uh, semiconductor uh, topic here or the superconductor? Sorry. Uh, uh, I would just add, um, we'll probably get to the truth of it within a matter of weeks because a lot of teams around the world are now replicating the recipe and double checking and peer reviewing on their own. Uh, you know, a lot of international institutions are aware that the United States is no longer trustworthy and its publications are bunk. So they oftentimes do replication procedures on their own in their domestically funded research labs. 
uh, as the United States tumbles through its competency crisis, a lot of countries are are just taking things on their own now rather than relying on the United States, which is kind of tragic. Yeah, I know that the um uh, the psych field for sure has a huge uh, replicability crisis. It's something what like eighty percent of their uh, studies can't be replicated right now. Is that um uh, you know, are they running into the same issues in the I guess you'd call them hard sciences, you know, like the the actual like yeah. really important stuff, not the stupid psych bullshit. Yeah, the the I, I remember the Harvard's um whatever the department of Harvard that that evaluates if someone's plagiarizing or lying was found to be plagiarizing and lying and was fired. <laughs> and uh, and then uh that's too st- that's too good to be true. I forget the name of the department. The the Anton Petrov is a really good YouTuber that reports on these things uh he he's he's done a few reports on on this particular crisis um and then the the president of stanford either the president of the school or the physics department i forget he was recently he forced to resign because he was lying to nature i think it was nature he was lying to and you know plagiarizing data and just lying left and right um there's this thing called um a publication versus replication ratio or something like that and people are starting to use this metric to evaluate if someone's claims are truthful or not. Uh, you know, if you if you publish a thousand articles and you have like two replications, you're like two percent, like like point two percent trustworthy. Uh, if you have like fifty publications and fifty replications, you're one hundred percent trustworthy. People are starting to rank scientists off of this ratio. I might be getting the ratio wrong, but that's the, the gist of it. Um, and United States scientists are really falling down on this metric, like pretty bad, like 20% trustworthiness, like pretty bad. Well, that's uh, fantastic news all around, and I am white pilled once again. <laughs> Thank you very much you know, for that great update right there. Sorry. But <laughs> but speaking but speaking of um, uh, competency and everything and all that fun stuff, um, our next story here is about you know the American space program. Of course, you know the uh, apparently NASA has lost contact with the deep space probe. As a result of a computing error that was done by none other than a uh, 27-year-old chick uh, recently out of college. So it's very, um, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I feel very confident in, uh, you know, NASA that they are letting 27-year-old women uh, maintain billion-dollar, you know, uh, space probes and everything like this. So um, what do you guys have to say about uh, this topic? Well, I mean, it's it would be tragic to actually lose contact with either Voyager 1 or Voyager 2 at this point, just because, you know, these are sort of legendary objects. So they're the uh, two objects that are furthest out of the solar system. I think they're the only two objects that have ever even exited the solar system, depending on how you actually want you know, to find that barrier, which is kind of tricky. But in some sense, they are outside of the solar system and just sort of represent great achievements, not just in mankind, but uh, for America itself. and to you know lose access to these things as they move uh further into you know literally outer space uh that would just be uh very melancholy it's uh there's something i think you kind of see this in a very uh soy way with on like reddit and stuff how they anthropomorphize the the rovers and give them twitter personalities and stuff that's that's very that's kind of a very lame uh but there's um I feel a sort of uh, emotional attachment to the fact that we put these things out there and we can still communicate with them. And and like in some small way, it's a, it's a permanent marker of mankind's presence, even if our time on the planet uh, is limited. Yeah. So what actually happened here was, um, it's a computing error made by this chick that, um, you know, tilted, uh, the probe off its axis went like uh, two degrees. Uh, yeah, that's uh, what it was here. So, and obviously two degrees when you're billions of miles away from the earth is a pretty big deal here. Um, and when it means by their, um, why don't you guys explain to us what it means where they uh, lose contact with it? It's not like it just randomly like ran into an asteroid or something. What exactly was uh, the issue here? Yeah, I, I kind of explained it a little bit before the show that um, these these probes typically have a gyroscope that keeps them locked to a certain position and that gyroscope might have a a clock that will gradually tilt the craft to keep alignment with the earth 
And these occasionally need uh, correcting maneuvers and, and things like that. The cool thing about a gyroscope is that you can use it to change the orientation of a craft without losing fuel because you're not really changing the direction. You're just changing the orientation. And using a gyroscope will allow you to like kind of turn stuff around, basically. Uh, and one of those times they did it, 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 like you said, it was like off by a few degrees and, and it this woman specifically is the department head. So it's her job to really like make sure everything's checked and then confirm it. It's not, she didn't like write the code or anything. She's just supposed to, she's supposed to go over it and confirm it and then send it out to like the, to the satellite dish. Uh, she seems to have not caught this. I, I want to emphasize the fact that this woman has only been out of school for five years and this role is usually senior, right? Your oversight, your, you're the oversight of like a 50 year old program probably should want someone maybe in their 50s or 60s with some years of experience of how this works not someone five years on the job so um can we get a last name so we can like figure out no 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 she's just a normal yeah, white woman yeah, can i get a can I get an early life check yeah i think uh yeah because I, I i'm partially responsible with making this a big deal because my post got like my post and disgrace propagandist post together we we collectively got like a million views on twitter so <laughs> Uh, it, it, it so, you're the, so you're the source of, I'm, of I'm, I'm, here. I'm, I'm, yeah. the, I'm the source of finding this woman out. Like I looked up the, when, when propaganda, uh, uh, disgraced propagandist posted this. I was like, my my senses are tingling, and I looked it up, and of course, it's like a fresh out of school woman. Um, no, her name's like R Raskin, I think. Uh, so maybe that that triggers a early life section. I don't know. Let me look it up real quick. But uh, yeah. Uh, here at the old glory club we have you know guys on the ground in all places in all times you know <laughs> we've got we've got the best we have the best men we have top men uh working for us and uh feeding us info we, so. we, we have we have men that don't even need to check the early life section that's how good they yeah. are yeah. <laughs> that, that's my curse our spidey senses are tingling yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so i mean she, I, I don't i can't find her name look it up on your own time i guess uh but it's the head of um, the Voyager 2 program, basically. she's She's been on the job for, like... She's been on this job for eight months and only graduated five five years ago. Uh, so she's, like, very fresh out of school. And I really don't know why she's in a senior role like this. She replaced, like, some, like, ancient boomer who's been on this since, like, the, the, the Apollo landings. And, like, I don't know why they chose someone in their, like, late 20s, early 30s. I forget what. Well, um, I think we all I think we all know why. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm not being coy, of course, but uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> I suppose this is something that we can look forward to. I mean, I know uh, Morgoth has been talking a lot about this um, uh, recently, and um, I wrote a piece for the uh, Old Glory Club back in um, uh, like December of last year, talking about this uh, topic, like the um, the competency uh, crisis that everyone um, is talking about, and it's coming down the pipe, man. And it's one thing to you know have. Um, you know some affirmative action at your local mcdonald's it's another thing to have affirmative action at some of the most essential you know uh organizations that actually run the government uh you know definitely in this case of uh space exploration and space travel where there is literally zero room for error so what do you guys think this is uh you know tells us about you know the competency crisis that everyone is talking about it's definitely getting worse i mean I don't want to speak ill of things that I've been a part of, but like I, having recently left the academic world at the PhD level, quitting not because I finished the PhD, it was rather morbid and I just didn't have confidence that anything I did would matter in the long run. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a lot of times this rush to be the first to something, even if it's not really that important or does anything contribute uh, that contributes to science. Um, and then these people get rushed out of school into the best positions from the, the networks that form. It's, it's a lot of like, like intellectual inbreeding with a lot of these institutions. Um, so like, you know, like we bring over a bunch of refugees from Germany in, in the mid century for, for who knows what reason. And they bring in all their friends within five years that dominate the field and then all their children become the next jet wave of, of the intellectual class. And this replicates with a declining performance because it's not Marriott, Marriott, it's not based off uh, merit, but based off of uh, connection, um, which don't get me wrong. In, in most areas, uh, connection is better than merit, but in areas of science and performance, it should probably be merit based. Yeah, I mean, I know I, I mean, probably anybody in the chat could speak to this right now. I mean, 
how many issues are you having with just some of the most basic uh, tasks uh, right now? Like, how long does it take you to get, you know, like your tires rotated at your local, um, you know, mechanics place? How long does it take, uh, to, you know, to have a plumber uh, come over to your place? Um, at what rate do you have um, restaurants just not having people there to actually like serve you food and cook you food and stuff like that? Like, this is having major effects all over the place. And it seems that COVID just like put this process that was already going on and just literally stepped on the gas. Um, what do you guys have to say about this? Are you kind of I mean, finding the same issues basically anywhere you go? We went to Lowe's last week to buy a couple, order a couple cabinet doors custom made. There was no one that could help us. There was nobody that could help us. No one that could give us a price, give us an idea of uh, how long it would take to order. It was no one who could order it for us. I mean, that's pretty much everywhere we go now. doesn't matter if it's a restaurant. doesn't matter um, if it's a grocery store. doesn't matter. We're just expecting the least out of everybody. And that's probably what's keeping us sane at this point. <laughs> Yeah, I have a, I guess, somewhat of a similar experience. I mean, I live in a pretty remote area, but we've been waiting. By the time it's done, we'll have been waiting for close to a year to get a well drilled on the property, um, which is obviously pretty crazy. Um, and, you know, I have a number of experiences sort of similar to that where you just can't get anything done quickly anymore. Or in other cases, you can't be helped at all um, if you want something specific, which is a pretty new experience for me like having a problem and there being seemingly no one who is actually capable of helping me solve it and then just having to solve it entirely on my own yeah i could probably contribute to this in architecture um i, I first noticed this problem starting back in probably 2017 at a job i was at, at a different at a firm a long time ago we were part of the hudson yards construction project uh that's like one of the mega projects in new york city uh, like billions and billions of dollars. And it was around the time when the trade war with China started. And, and initially this caused some problems with items that you usually outsource to China because the government both, uh, well, a large amount of the government, regardless of party, was aware that they, they need to cut off China, like China's stealing other intellectual property and there needs to be a move to get away from China. And so a large amount of these supply chains started initially with wanting to find new supply chains besides China. Uh, for us in architecture, that was things like glass and, and metal lighting and and all kinds of like building materials that were just suddenly went up in price and double the amount of time it would take us to get here because instead of doing the Pacific uh, cargo runs, you're doing something from like India that had to go twice as far and get checked at like multiple border patrol, border checks. And then turns out the rust got in like two months before along the way. It's awful. Um, I remember there were, there was a, a move to I think I think it was glass that was really crazy. One of my building projects at that time was uh, very very depressing. But we were bulletproofing a school uh, for obvious reasons, and the bulletproofing for for the glass went from like three weeks for like I think like four hundred thousand dollars to like something like twelve weeks and like one point two million. It was like overnight the price is just doubled and the and the um the the leeway doubled too. Uh, tripled sometimes it was really bad and so sometimes people just gave up on the projects i know at least a few schools they switched from bulletproof to bullet resistant <laughs> and they didn't tell the, the parents that they did this they marketed it as bulletproof but it's only oh. like if, if someone comes up there and shoots the, with a gun that that's not gonna work uh <laughs> and uh you know everyone uh, it, there's a lot of weird stuff like that happens in architecture, but where like you, you market it as a, a phase one bullet resistance phase two in 10 years when the price is dropped, then it'll be bulletproof and you advertise it as bulletproof, but then you never actually do phase two. So it just ends up being like wrong. Um, that was back in 2017 through 18. Uh, it got really bad with COVID obviously when you just couldn't import anymore and you had to find domestic sources. Uh, at that point, some construction projects just doubled in their length and like from like, six months to a year and some of them were just abandoned there's still all kinds of projects where i live that, that have just been abandoned i don't even know who owns them anymore the tools are still laying around they've been like that for two years now uh some of them were in great shape and now they're just rying away after two years of neglect uh yeah it's very it, it's very reminiscent of um living in a, me living in a communist country after right after everything fell apart you had all of yeah the, 
these projects that never never got taken care of um yeah it's it this doesn't bode well for the future yeah no yeah, certainly I, not yeah i've had another problem uh just on, as another example like my uh, generator really needs some repairs and uh one time i did get it repaired i just took it to a local guy and he did it in like a day because uh, all of the larger businesses if you no matter who you call, if they could even take it at all, their backlog is always like three months. And it's not like it's a particularly weird situation. Like if you wait six months, they're still just backlogged for three months, which is just insane because actually like, you know, switching out a part on a single generator is, uh, you know, not really, a, you know, I've, I've done it myself before. It's not really a particularly uh, difficult job. And like my generator is pretty uh, hard to work in just by design and it still only took me a few hours so like just the fact that these major businesses pretty much every sector are just backlogged for months and months and months in terms of actually being able to get a job done it's just uh endemic now it's no matter what i want done uh everything is like that yeah it seems like there's a a perfect storm here of you know, obviously, America doesn't really make much of our manufacture uh, goods anymore. They've been outsourced and all the outsourced stuff is just over engineered or under engineered pieces of crap. So it's difficult to work on. We also have a uh, a workforce that, you know, is just we have an over manufacture of elites. You know, everyone's going to college. No one's doing any of the grunt work uh, anymore. And the combination of just, you know, I know it's kind of like a boomer talking point, but there definitely is uh, some degree of truth here. Um, you know, the work ethic in uh, people, you know, uh, growing up these days, is just not what it was uh, before. And as more and more uh, boomers and Gen Xers retire from these critical positions, you know, are, are Zoomers, millennials, alphas, are they going to step in to, uh, you know, fill this void? Uh, I don't know. And then that bodes the question of, well, what's the regime going to do in response to this? And my thought process for a long period of time is, well, they're just going to turn on the the old uh, immigration faucet and uh, inject a bunch of people in here to do the work instead of actually, you know, training people. You know, people are still going to be pushed to go to college and uh, we're still going to have a lot of problems in this regard. What do you guys think about that? Honestly, one of the only things holding uh, society together in some extent is like YouTube. Uh, all this knowledge that's disappearing, it's just sitting around on YouTube. Like if I need to do anything. There's no one to ask how it's done. You just have to go on YouTube and look at a video. Um, and pretty much any like um, construction project or, or sort of, you know, handyman type project, like, you know, changing the carburetor on my generator. Like you, the only way I can figure out how to do it is just go, go on YouTube and see instructions from like the one person who knows how to do it and, and happen to upload it. But like if that knowledge isn't there, like then what? Uh, I would have no idea how to do any of this shit. And it seems like nobody does. <laughs> yeah. And, and you, you realize that if something were to happen to YouTube or something, like it would just get shut down. Uh, you, you're looking at like a massive wave of incompetence, just starting out thin air. I, you know, I, I'm not sure how, cause YouTube's never been financially viable for Google. And I'm not entirely sure how much longer that's going to be freely accessible for, for their own financial stake, basically. Um, I know this quarter, most major tech firms seem to be making pretty good profits. Like uh, Amazon made double its expected profits. So like for now, they're finding revenue streams to, to get uh, income. But once that changes, I mean, it's pretty bad. Yeah, definitely. Um, so this is why we here at the Old Glory Club are definitely stressing the need for um, in life uh, uh, networks of people, you know, like um, knowing how to work on refrigerators or knowing how to be an HVAC guy or an electrician. You know, these skills are going to be worth your weight in gold, you know, uh, pretty soon here. So it's important for guys like us to form these kinds of connections and form these kinds of uh, mentorship programs and such to ensure that this knowledge uh, remains. We can actually help each other out in the times to come because I don't know about you guys, but I'd definitely much rather, you know, seek some advice from uh, one of our guys that, uh, you know, is a mechanic as opposed to uh, Joe Blow at uh, Mechanics 101 down the street who probably doesn't even know how to turn a wrench properly and is probably not going to put the oil in the right spot and is going to fuck up my car. So, you know, this is uh, definitely something we should be pushing. Yeah, I actually had that happen uh, the last time uh, 
I got my oil changed or the time before last. Nothing major. They just forgot to hit the switch that says they changed the oil. So like the the, the light came on on my dashboard, uh, and I thought yeah, something was wrong. Just little things like that. Yeah, indeed. Um, anything else, uh, guys, you want to say about um, uh, NASA or the uh, competency crisis in general? I would say on the yeah. subject of vehicles, um, don't ever, 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 ever throw out your owner's manual. Um, <laughs> like that has some how to do very basic stuff in it already. And, and basic specifications will go a long way to help you figure out on your own which spare parts you actually need. Like for example, um, I, I needed to get some some chains for my uh, my car, and I had no idea what what the chains were, and uh, I had to look up what specifications my tires were and, and the size and all of that to figure out okay, what kind of chains do I buy for this? So yeah, it, it's one of those things where you have to be kind of resourceful. Yeah, absolutely. And, and this also uh, provides a bit of opportunity um, for guys as well. You know, I mean, uh, there's a market for this stuff. There's a market for uh, general uh, handyman skills, you know, so uh, go pick them up uh, in your spare time, you know, um, or even hop around from a uh, trades job to trades job and just uh, acquire a number of skills. I know a lot of our guys they are uh, trades guys and uh, those skills are going to be very, very valuable. So uh, go and uh, max out those. Now, on the subject of the competency crisis, um, how about the competency of international journalists uh, trying to cross some, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, state lines here? So, uh, shall we uh, talk about uh, Coach Red Pill uh, Gonzalo Lira here, guys? Um, apparently, uh, you know, he got picked up once again by um, uh, the Ukrainians and uh, was trying to escape, but uh, apparently it didn't work out for him. So, uh, who wants to give us an update on uh, Coach Red Pill Gonzalo Lira? Well, it was pretty much the best move he could have done from what it seems uh like according to assuming all this is uh accurate and i know some people question you know whether or not it is uh everything he posts in the thread seems like realistic to me from what i've read about you know other people being uh arrested and, and tortured in ukrainian prisons but uh yeah apparently uh they told him that he was going to be found guilty at his trial in a few months and put in jail for like 15 years or something, but they gave him back all of his documents and stuff. Um, and it was suggested to him that they were basically telling him to leave the country. Um, I'm not sure if he got uh, nicked because he posted about it and then tried to leave or if he would have gotten nicked uh, whether or not he did that. Um, the whole thing is just tragic. I mean, the U.S. Embassy should really just be intervening him and intervening here, just getting him out of the country. Um, it's it's just pathetic that that uh, this is just being allowed to happen to him very openly. I mean, everybody knows about it. I, anyone who's paid attention to the war, like this is a very public figure who's been arrested for just um, you know posting public information on YouTube and just criticizing the Zelensky regime, and the idea that the uh, American state would let him just rotten ukrainian jail for you know basically the rest of his life i mean that's that's just um uh, completely unacceptable uh, honestly uh maybe people should be petitioning the embassy or something to get him the hell out of the country because that's what the american embassy is, is supposed to do it's supposed to protect american citizens in other countries and according to his the documents he posted he didn't actually break any laws either so yeah i mean this is an, an important thing to stress i mean like you know, uh, Gonzalo uh, comes from my side of the internet. At least he did for uh, a while. Um, you know, grifting and off of the manosphere, and then decided to uh, switch on over to uh, international uh, news and all this kind of stuff and uh, reporting. Um, you guys can have whatever opinions you want on the guy, or if it was intelligent for him to basically tweet out that he was going to try and leave the country, or if you think this uh, situation is just absurd that he's there in the first place. Um, you know, clearly saying something that is against uh, the Ukrainian regime and all that good stuff and expecting uh, nice things to be done to him. But at the end of the day, this guy is an American citizen. And quite frankly, it is absolutely absurd um, that this is basically just allowed to go on. Like uh, Charlemagne just said there, like this is really something that the state actually has like a mandate to do. You know, it's like protected citizens abroad and they're not even doing that. They don't protect their citizens here. They put the, they persecute political, per, um, political dissidents here it's easier for them to do it over there no one's watching yeah i agreed with that yeah for me it's particularly surreal because like i've even talked to the dude before in voice calls and now he's 
he's involved in all of this. It's very weird to see, you know, one of our own basically uh, uh, kidnapped and, and put into this situation. Yeah, uh, oh, oh, yeah. Uh, the, the, I mean, the most disgusting part, honestly, was the way they had that uh, person come out on uh, oh, the social trend. media and announce, uh, you know, his, his capture, basically. I didn't know that person existed, but uh, it's very disgusting. That yeah. seems a little bit humiliation ritual to me. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And um, uh, you had a fantastic um, uh, tweet um, about this um, uh, to uh, Charlene in response to that. Like, you know, just just the picture. This is the face of, you know, this conflict. You know, this is the face of the Ukrainian side here. You have a um, American who... Uh, uh, left his family to uh, become a troon, you know, uh, halfway across the planet, and yeah, uh-huh. uh huh. It's just, it's it's just so absurd, you know. You really just can't make this stuff up. Yeah, I was just looking at uh, Millennial Woes tweeted uh, the picture, and he said, "Don't forget to like, share, and send us missiles." Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's... <laughs> like that's what the video looked like. It's it's. I, yeah, it easily time, could have been. I, it easily could have been contra points. You know, I had to look into it because I, I was like, this, this must be a LARPer. This can't actually be like a representative of their government. I mean, what the hell, man? It's no, it's just a humiliation ritual. That's what this whole thing is. Yeah. So, um, I guess some. Uh, uh, he's been looped up. Um, uh, here he's been uh grabbed. He was trying to uh escape. Um, so I mean, uh, who knows? I mean, uh, wh what do you think is uh. Know, the odds he actually gets out of there or is he going to be uh, uh kept in perpetual pr prison until the end of this um uh, conflict i mean it's just so weird like having this conversation because we're just so far off the reservation at this point you know it's like it, it, anything can happen really i, I think i, I think in in part. in sorry uh cringe walker the i think gonzalo in his his tweet thread he said he was gonna he's expecting he's gonna get put away for five to eight years i think that we could probably expect that to be the case if that truly is what he's sentenced for um yeah i think he's probably just gonna have to do the hard time yeah that's what i unfortunately that's what it looks i don't see any other way out i mean it looks like he's just gonna do the time that's uh what they've said is gonna happen they didn't let him leave the country the u.s embassy is doing nothing you know no one's doing anything and it's not like they're not aware of the story i mean i've seen all pretty much any commentator on the war is aware of the story. So of course the state department is aware of them as well. Um, I mean, it has been in contact with them. I mean, the, he said that the embassy gave him thoughts and prayers three times, basically. I mean, what is this? Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't even seen any um, questions. Like he, you know, when they do those like ridiculous, like pr uh, white house, like press some uh, like secretary meetings and questions, they were really big under the Trump administration. Cause everyone was just flipping out about them every five minutes. But of course, during the Biden administration, you know, nobody cares essentially. But of course, there were no questions asked at the, you know, the pressing from uh, the Biden administration. Because again, like we've been saying, like uh, Gonzalo is an American. He's an American citizen. You know, I mean, he wasn't born here, but, um, you know, like the, uh, they should be, you know, responding to this. Like literally an American citizen is now being imprisoned in Ukraine who are who we are supplying with weapons. You know? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. They could just get him out with the staff of their fingers. They could be like, give us our guy back now. And then it would be yeah. done. It'd be literally zero effort. Yeah, or you could say on the hard line, you could say, give us our guy back or we, we stop giving you money and weapons. And, and that would be the way that you do that. Right. Um, but it's just, it, it, it reminds me, it reminds me of FDR and, and Churchill, honestly, because you see the way that they interact with the Soviet Union in some references. And, and this is like the same dynamic. You have these guys over a barrel you have no reason why they can't give you this extremely small concession and they're telling you to, to go like fuck off basically no you're you're, you're bankrolling them and you're giving them free stuff yeah similar yeah. situation actually with the soviet union um i know there was a case when a a bomber that was bombing japan uh crashed um on the eastern coast of the so of soviet territory and Stalin kept them in prison for, for years and, and wouldn't give them back. Um, you know, it's, yep. it's this, they always do the same thing. Um, you were going to say, Grinch Walker? Uh, I was going to say, like, the I think the tragedy there is that, like, I don't think this lack of concern by the government will change regardless of who wins in the election. Because, like, I, 
I, I, coming from like a New York perspective of like a, being surrounded by Democrats, most people don't even know who this person is. I'm not sure if anyone in the administration even knows he's been arrested yet. And I don't know if I, I'm obviously the embassy doesn't give a shit, but uh, like, you know, this is the kind of thing that, that you solve by probably going through a Congress or, or, or Senator, uh, someone who represents you, who you can express interest to. If, if it's a, it looks like a way for him to get an easy PR win, he'll bring it up uh specifically looking at like you know the the congressional and senatorial uh uh commissions and and little like you know permanent commission and groups i forget what they're called in senate when like you know this is our permanent commission reviewing foreign policy or something uh but if if you're if you if you look at one of those co congressional clicks i forget does anyone know the term i think about congressional clicks there's like permanent mm -hmm. Seating commissions or or Permanent like committees, uh, oh, like one of committees. the foreign, yeah, like yeah, one of the foreign okay. affairs committees or something. Yeah, like that. that's what that's what I'm thinking. So like, if you are represented by a committee person who's, or someone who's in one of these committees and he's you're in his elected like jurisdiction, you could probably write to them and get more more activity on it than waiting on the government to do something. Um, this is someone who'd be able to directly contact the Ukrainian government from this from Congress. It doesn't only really, I don't think it has to go through the president alone. Uh, and, and he can pull strings uh, if you're if you live in that area that could, that could help basically. All right, um, we actually have the uh, video here, um, so we might as well uh, pull that up here and uh, play it so everyone can see the uh, <laughs> the clown world that we're uh, subjected to the, these days. Um, so let's uh, go ahead and pull that up here. There's a reason you haven't heard from Gonzalo Lira yet with his so-called uh, attempts at asylum in Hungary. It's because. The state security services, better known as the SBU, are some of the most talented and focused law enforcement agents across the globe. And in doing so, they knew where Gonzalo Lira was. I think it lagged out. Yeah, yeah I think it lagged out. Did the SBU get us? Oh, did we get a? Did we could take it down. <laughs> uh -oh. Yeah, the stream froze. Interesting. It was, it was the fake tits. They're so massive. They're clogging the lands. God, God damn it! <laughs> they took <laughs> they, they took us out. Um, Just letting every everyone know we have a super chat on entropy. Oh, no, we're we still we're still live. I think I'm I'm playing the stream on my phone. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, 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 well, we'll uh, we'll keep on talking then. Get, well, get that get yeah, that this, creature uh, off my screen. Yeah, yeah. Get the get the get the creature off the damn screen here. Yeah, it's ca causing problems here. Uh, so, <laughs> so that, I thought that, I thought the damn stream got taken down. Oh my god, that's hilarious. That, that, that thing <laughs> speaks perfect English, so you know this is a propaganda run. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. This, this person was. This person was selected because they know certain right-winging people that care about him are going to not only be angry they get caught, but now offended and feeling humiliated. You can, 100%. You can tell. Mm -hmm. we, yeah. uh, we, should, we should also point out, I mean, Absolutely. the SBU is not one of the most talented and amazing or whatever was said security forces. I mean, they're, when, these people are totally not only corrupt. I mean, think FBI, but Ukrainian. Like, <laughs> you know, it's just like, what a farce. Uh, but yeah, that that was only made just to, to to trigger us, basically. I mean, which you know, I guess mission accomplished. But I don't know. Maybe people should, uh, as suggested, write to their uh, congressman to try and get someone to do something about uh, about this. Because um, yeah, the, his, Gonzalo Lira's only hope at this point is um, the American government decided to pull him out. That's the only way he gets out of this. Yeah, well, um, we got uh, two super chats here that I'm uh, we'll go over really fast before I'm um, moving on to the next subject here. Um, Blue Car Ryan for uh, five dollars USA says, uh, "Will the Trump indictment result in anything good for us? Maybe accelerating and shattering uh, Normicon trust in liberalism slash democracy." Well, hold that thought there, uh, Blue Collar Ryan. We will get to that uh, in a moment here, and we will definitely be um, addressing that 
uh, when the time is right. Also, uh, $5 from um, uh, Pleb of Reason here. Are you guys familiar with the eminent domain situation in South Dakota? Uh, company is using it to seize lands from farms for carbon um, sequester uh, pipeline. They are uh, using armed security to do it. Governor has done nothing. They donated to her. Um, I have not heard about this, but this is not exactly anything new um, from uh, America using uh, eminent uh, domain uh, to take land from uh, farmers. Um, this has definitely been um, uh, an issue. I remember on um, uh, the southern border when uh, Trump uh, tried to build his wall, there was a bunch of uh, things going on with that. But um, are you guys familiar with this uh, South Dakota situation? Uh, I haven't heard anything about it. I haven't heard this, but it doesn't sound like a proper use of eminent domain because that has to be for like, critical infrastructure. And unless Congress is declared the need for carbon neutral stuff to be critical infrastructure it's a lawsuit you can sue the company yeah mm -hmm. they're using the they're using some pinkertons too on this so um this looks like some private uh private organized crime yeah sounds like lawsuits are in order here so i don't know if we have anyone in south dakota but uh that would be uh, a project for someone to take up yeah, absolutely. If um uh, if anyone uh, in the chat is from um uh, uh, South Dakota, send us an email at um uh, oldgloryclub uh, at gmail .com and uh, maybe we can do something about it. Uh, get somebody that, to look into it. That would be good, and you can you can actually uh, fight these things and win. Uh, you know, a lot a lot of times what happens is they don't dot their eyes and cross their t's, and they just kind of uh, assume no one's going to challenge it. But if you can get your uh, city council or something to actually um, do something about it uh, you can actually get this stuff reversed i've seen it happen so definitely email us uh if you uh are, are in south dakota or have any expertise on the the matter yeah indeed for sure we're trying to set up our uh, our networks all across the country uh right now and uh you guys can definitely be a part of that so yeah definitely reach out uh to us for sure um Gents, uh, our next topic here uh, <laughs> should be uh, quite a bit of humor here. Um, so apparently a bunch of texts uh, got leaked uh, from Mr. Rudy Giuliani, you know, a former uh, Trump lawyer and all that good stuff. Um, shall we go through a couple of these and uh, have some good laughs to uh, see what the, the highest in the uh, American system are talking about? Someone, someone has to read them in full as a yeah. chance. Yes. Like <laughs> who, who wants to do it? I'll read this one. Come here, big tits. Come here, big tits. Your tits belong to me. Give them to me. I want to claim my tits. I want to claim my tits. I want to claim my tits. These are my tits. He's still the least sexually aggressive Italian in New York. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you a story. After this. I mean, this is the guy who, who made famous stop and frisk, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, the that that is no, true. Matt Damon is a fag. Matt Damon is also five two. Eyes of blue. Coochie coochie coo. <laughs> <laughs> what, the, what even is that? Oh man. What what is the context where you would say that? I'm know. just imagining just him. Drunk, uh, probably. <laughs> Do you guys remember during the um the Kraken uh fiasco with like a uh who was that name uh lady a uh, Sydney uh Power whatever the hell it was when he went on air and he was like sweating bullets uh Giuliani was I'm just imagining him sweating. like sweating profusely like as he's talking about the <laughs> as he's uh talking to some chick in the back yeah, of the window about this what? can you, can you imagine dad. him in the bar and having that happen to him where he's just like <laughs> the, the 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 black sweat is just streaming down his face and he's trying to like to, like ask for for her tits or something <laughs> my dad my dad listens to rudy gianni on the he has his own radio show in new york so i have to hear him talk like for an hour every like saturday and sunday he talks exactly like this on any topic he, he hasn't changed at all and uh he'll be like like uh, he'll quote the bible and then start talking about someone's tits i'm like what dude what are you doing <laughs> uh this is absurd but uh the fun doesn't stop there guys uh we got even more uh of these to uh, look at here so um who who wants to read them uh this one <laughs> all right i'll uh i'll do it why not um uh, mr giuliani uh uh jays uh they want to go through that freaking passover all the time man oh man get over <laughs> get over the passover it was like three thousand years ago okay the red sea bar did a big deal not the first time that happened <laughs> That that was number one of one oh nine right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. And the the next one here. 
the the way natural selection works, uh, J men have small cocks because they can't use them after they get married, whereas the Italian men use them all their lives so they get bigger. <laughs> this is amazing. Tom, One day you should. Thomas had the best tweet on that when he's just like. I don't think that's how that works. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One day you have to play who said it, Mussolini or Giuliani. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is just so absurd. Oh, it... <laughs> I can't believe it. This is very New York Italian. I got to tell you, this is like exactly how they talk. My my One of my neighbors is Sicilian and. Every every time he sees me coming home, he says like, "Ah, mommy, you go to the Chinese girl, you get a good massage." And like, no, no, I just came back to work. He said, "Like, I get you a discount. Come with me." It's just ridiculous. Yeah, I know an Italian guy from uh, uh, Sicily who's very much like this. Uh, lives in Belgium now, but oh man, uh, so uh, exactly oh. like that. They they really are. They're, they're little little folk. little backstory, but they him and all of his friends that immigrated here all were friends with the same village prostitute and half the times they're talking about how they miss the prostitute who's like the village whore <laughs> <laughs> like to like all drink cigars and, and drink wine and then start explaining all the different things that they liked about their village and it always comes up the village whore it's I mean, really I mean, just imagine like the conversations that Giuliani and Trump have just the two of them when they're in a <laughs> oh room together. You, you know, <laughs> like, oh my God. Uh, <laughs> I want to see those transcripts, man. I want to be in the room when those two are talking together. The Trump tapes <laughs> will come out eventually. Yeah. <laughs> like the Nixon tapes. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> um, all right. And we got um, uh, one more here uh, as well. Um, oh, boy. Um, uh Okay, uh, who, uh, you know what, Cringe Walker, how about you read out um, uh, <laughs> this one here for us? <laughs> if you can see it on screen. I got it. Oh, go, go ahead, Pete. Uh, well, I fool around sometimes, I do. When a girl seduces me and tells me all of these hot all of these hot stories and dirty things and tells me how much she wants to suck on me and take my shoes off and lick my feet and touches me. When I'm in a limousine, she takes all of her clothes. The limo driver said, what is going on? And she started sucking me on the way to Mr. K's house. And I thank her. And I thank her for making me feel good. Sir, the question was, is this your handwriting? <laughs> <laughs> he just has to go out of his way you know, to explain. He's like, uh, he just completely ignores that. Has to talk about this time chick blew him in the back of the limousine. Oh this is literally like the response, ma'am. This is a Wendy's. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I don't know about you guys, but I am so so confident uh, that these guys are running the country and are <laughs> in the in the halls of power right now as we speak. So. Um, hopefully Giuliani isn't working on um, uh, Trump's uh, defense uh, here for his uh, next round of indictments, which is our next story here that uh, the Don himself has and been indicted once again. I swear you, you need to start collecting these like they're Yu-Gi-Oh cards at this point, you know, get a full set. Maybe they'll be worth something. But um, uh, once again, Donald Trump has been uh, indicted here, guys. So, um, uh, God, uh, what more is this to say? Obviously, it's just a complete farce. And we all know it's politically motivated. Um, what, what more do we have to say on this one, gents? I think I remember reading the charges from memory and they were like something like, cons they were the most vaguest terms you could, you could hear, like conspiracy to stop an election. It's like conspiracy to, to, to seek like overthrowing an election. I'm like, is, is that like an actual like legal issue? If you rate, like, it basically like comes down to, do you think the election was fraudulent or not? You have a right to think that that's not like. They're going to have to provide some pretty serious evidence that there was an actual conspiracy rather than just him uh, asking someone to investigate a, an election. Like, that's that's well, a pretty tall order. I think, unfortunately, conspiracy is pretty easy to prove because all it really means is you talk to somebody else about the topic. And that's a conspiracy. But, but if it's on especially, record... Especially if you start acting and doing stuff. Yeah, conspiracy, the reason they're charging him with conspiracy is because you can actually um, get worse sentences for conspiring to do something versus actually doing it. Um, and it's kind of just this catch-all law they they apply when they want to throw the book at you. 
That's the American way, I guess. Yeah, I mean, conspir- uh, conspiracies are uh, really messed up, actually. Um, do I, we have I a, to, yeah, go ahead. Do we have a, sorry, do we have a date to start the trial? Like when it's going to start? Um, I think one of them starts around the time of the New Hampshire primaries. Probably yeah. entirely coincidentally. Yeah, well, one of them, one of them <laughs> starts um in the next like couple months here. Um, I know that. I thought the, I think it was the New Jersey one that starts in like uh, September or October or something like that, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah. so know. it's it seems pretty likely that at least some of the campaign trail he's going to be in jail, uh, and I I mean I mean if they can they might be able to like delay, uh, delay the the trial for like a year or so, um, by like oh I have a health emergency or oh I have this or that. Yeah, I mean I'm a. Uh... I guess uh, to piggyback off of this earlier, we had a super uh, like, chat come in. I'm pretty oh. sure the one in Florida he'll be able to delay. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, sorry. Hold on, hold on. I think I'm. Uh, it was either me that broke up or you did. I'm uh, cringy. I don't know uh, what it was, but um, anywho, here um, to uh, to piggyback off of uh, super chat we had earlier from uh, Blue Collar Ryan. He was asking us, um, "Will this indictment result in anything good for us? Maybe accelerating or shattering uh, Normicon myths uh, and all that stuff." So. Uh, what do we think about um, that here? Do we actually think there's going to be any uh, result from this on um, uh, uh, on that front? You know, I mean, honestly, as far as I'm concerned, like, uh, you know, is this really going to change minds? Like, have you not been paying attention up until this point? Like, is this really like the the watershed moment? You know, the really interesting because I, I I'm in New York, so I'm surrounded by progressives, and I oftentimes ask what their opinions are because I feel like I'm like tapping into the hive mind of the left a little bit. Uh, this is the first time where no one seems to care. Not a single progressive I talk to cares at all. They just kind of like, really? and the their the reason for why they don't care when I ask is really interesting. They're saying the 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 Trump supporters are still going to support him no matter what. So from the left wing perspective, they're coming from the perspective of how can we get these people to stop caring about Trump? And what they're discovering is that they can't, and that's destroying them. That I think this is like the, the terminal phase of TDS where they're realizing that this is not going to change. You can't, even if he goes to jail, they're still going to love him. They're still going to want him. And there's, and like the mark that Trump's left in politics of America is not going away in our lifetimes. That will echo regardless of if he's the president or not. Hmm. I think that's, that's what they fear. Them. I, think, I think they fear that echo more than him himself. And eventually they're going to realize no matter what they do to the man, he's put ideas into the waters that's not going to go away. Yeah, I was actually uh, responding to something in a private chat related to this topic uh, just on, you know, what Trump has done. Like politics in America is now all about Trump. It's defined by Trump. So like, it doesn't, even if he's failed in any number of ways, he's, he's done that. And the, and the, uh, the left cannot actually get rid of that. They cannot get rid of politics being all about Trump, no matter what they do to him. And they're probably right as well, that they can't make people stop liking him. Anyone who's going to vote for him is is going to do it, no matter what the outcome is. So well, that's very fascinating that you uh, encountered that opinion. Well, yeah, one of the things you, I sorry. Go yeah, go I was just real quick. I don't know about you guys, but I would vote for him even if he's in prison. I don't I don't care at this point. <laughs> yeah, for sure. One of the things yeah. I we lost you again. I'm uh, discovered uh, that oh, Bi- Biden is actually about. Um, Oh, sorry, my back. Yeah, yeah, you're back. Go. Okay, I, I, I discovered that Biden is actually three percent lower than where Trump was at this point in the polls. So Biden is now more unpopular than Trump at this point into the presidency, into into the first terms, uh, and that seems to be only growing. So, so Biden under this path will continue to become less popular than Trump. And I'm sorry, guys, but how are you going to hide that? How are you going to steal that? Right. Uh, well, the answer is you don't. You put him in prison while he's running for president, or and you make it yeah. so he can't run, basically. And that's the solution for that. But and it's not even a solution. It, like people still like him. That you can't remove the desire to see him in that White House again. Uh, and and once the left, I think once the left's managers realize that you're not going to defeat the personality, I don't know what the, that might drive them nuts. That might make them go extreme. I mean, extreme relative to what? Uh, true. Yeah, I mean, I'm, uh, I don't know if you guys saw this, but uh, Trump did a rally in um, Erie, Pennsylvania um, uh, last Saturday. 
uh, here. And we have a quick little clip uh, right here we can just show. Um, what's really only important here is like the first um, uh, 15, 20 seconds or so uh, here. But I mean, we're talking about how people just like love uh, Trump. And uh, obviously so. I mean, like the you look at like all the other politicians we were talking about last week about uh, Mitch McConnell and Diane Feinstein stuff that can barely talk. Um, we have all these other politicians that are just completely, you know, incoherent in any way, shape or form. It just appears. I mean, Ron DeSantis is basically like a brick wall, you know, guy just has like no charisma at all. Um, and then here we go with um, uh, Donald Trump here doing what he does best, just speaking off the cuff. Uh, let's listen to this for a couple seconds here. You know, they're not indicting me, they're indicting you. I just happen to be standing in their way. That's all it is. But what you're witnessing... Thank you. What you're witnessing is a continuation of the single greatest witch hunt of all time. This is prosecutorial misconduct, and its primary purpose is to steal another election. They're all in a very coordinated attack, trying to take away our election of 2024. They rigged the presidential election of 2020. We're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election of 2024. And yeah, there you go, right there. I mean, that's, you know, it's, that's a good not, angle to take. You know? Well, basically everything he said there is true as well. Um, yeah. I mean, this if you actually read about the various investigations that have been done i mean starting with like the mueller probe this has all been sort of just one long process to find him saying the wrong thing or showing someone the wrong document or anything like that to try and try and finally get him on an actual charge that could um put him in jail uh they couldn't they couldn't um remove him from office but maybe they can now finally get their win and actually uh land something that sticks to him I think it's interesting that he like did the meme right there at the beginning. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're not after the, uh, they're after you. I'm just in the way. I, that's really strange. I mean, it's it's also I mean, it's good marketing, you know, too. On top of that, you know, I mean, like again, there's a reason why people like Trump. I mean, obviously, all of us on this panel here have a lot of issues with uh, the man and uh, actually what he did policy wise during his um, uh, first four years there but you know there's there's just literally is nobody else who talks like it charlamagne you're absolutely correct like american politics is defined by donald trump now and this just simply is not changing for at least this election cycle for sure and maybe even into the future ones after that long after he's gone you know uh the dam has been broken at this point and it's yeah i i relate to this with the, not to be a history nerd but this sounds very similar to the Gracchi era of the roman republic how even when they killed and arrested Gracchus, his politics became the defining politics of the next century and the bills that he proposed would, would still be proposed and, and like reintroduced by a different generation of people. Um, and the, the optimates, the, the, like the embedded deep state of Rome just absolutely livid that they couldn't erase the memory of the man, even after they killed him. Like imagine taking a dead, a dead man's laws and reproposing them because they, you just hate the people that killed him so much. Like it, this is just going to be the default of American politics probably for the next 10 years. And there's nothing they can do to stop it. Yeah. I mean, and the next couple of months are going to be really, really interesting here, not just, um, you know, for the Republican primary purposes, but also just seeing what actually happens here with the, um, you know, the Donald Trump uh, case here. I mean, like, man, is it going to be interesting to well, see? That's, that's what has me so interesting. It's like, I, I, it seems like uh, completely stupid and pointless to actually find him guilty and, and put him in jail. Uh, like they don't really need to do that. They just need to interrupt his campaign schedule enough uh, with the, you know, mandatory trial dates and all of that in order to keep him off the campaign trail at certain times. Uh, but despite that, I can't say that, uh, you know, there's no way they're actually going to put him in prison uh, because they might actually go that far. That, that's what's really interesting. And, you know, we're not going to get an answer to that for, you know, probably you know, a couple of years. But, you know, I remember when uh, Skrilly, that that guy who got sent to prison yeah. for for invest for like investment fraud, um, he there. It's very easy to get a phone into prison, and he would actually do live streams from prison while I was in there. And I'm kind of seeing this point, where, this moment in the future where Trump comes back to Twitter, 
in jail and tweets from jail. And that would just be like hilarious. I would, I would want very conceivably win an election from jail. He could imagine tweeting from jail with all like you know, all the brothers with them. (laughs) That would. I don't think we've ever like we will reach depths of clown world not thought possible if that happens. Who who was it that had that um uh take? I forget who it was, but uh somebody said uh the best thing for Donald Trump to win the black vote is actually if he gets sent to prison. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, one of one of the things that's interesting is that they I've heard from the grapevine, because I, I know a few people in the Texas GOP, Trump has been trying to get the the arrest photo, like it, it, whenever they take his prints and stuff. And the, and multiple times they refuse to take the photo because they know that's a PR win, like instantly the most popular shirt to sell ever. Um, but the government is actively trying to not allow us to become PR by like not allowing publication of any photographs, not allowing uh, any kind of mugshots or anything to be released. But apparently Trump is actually actively trying to get the mugshots out or 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 even have them happen at all. Um, God, he, he, he wants he, this to happen. You know, that's an amazing point you bring up there, uh, Cringe Walker, and just bring something up uh, to the opposite side of the aisle here. Do you guys remember when the Roe v. Wade stuff was going down and the anonymous clerk leaked the reports out to the press or something like that? And of course, nothing was done with that. It just goes to show you that when the left makes arguments about how like the government is secretly controlled by like a, a right wing, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, mid-century Germans, basically, they're so full of crap. You know, just for once, wouldn't it be nice if we had one of our guys on the inside that leaked that um, photo <laughs> to the press? You know, just one time. Can we? Can you guys throw us a bone once, please? You know, it's it's just so absurd. Yeah, well, FBI, we, we believe if, in if virtue. Actually, <laughs> if the FBI actually does have patriots in control, you know, that would be nice. It'd probably be NSA uh, at this point. Yeah. Yeah. But the, it, it's just those leaks, like, always, they always go one way. They never go the other way. You know, but I mean, he, I guess here's another thing we should be um, saying about this as well. And uh, Cringe Walker, you're kind of bringing this up too about um, the left is kind of just like apathy towards this case. But uh, this is literally like the former president of the United States is being indicted and is possibly going to be sent to prison. Like, if this was happening in a third world country, the United States would be dropping bombs on it. You know, like, it, th- this is so absurd. You know, but this is just, uh, you know, this is just everyday goings on. No, well, and, it's and not, and not even the former president, the former president who's currently running for a second term. I mean, and is likely to win. Uh, is uh, one of the things that that my progressive friends in New York bring up. The thing that they lament the most is the fact that he is currently more popular than in 2020. That he's only <laughs> grown in popularity, <laughs> and and this this is a stick in the mud for them. They like. You can tell the brain cells trying to figure out why is he just keep getting more popular. Now, anybody in a rational situation like seven years ago would have figured, okay, I can't win this one. I'm just going to ignore it. But they can't. They just can't. They they want the moral win of being proven right. Uh, but not only being proven right, but being being wanted by people to be proven right, like being said that they were right, that they're just – kind of digging a ditch to themselves no one's gonna ever tell them they're right no one's gonna ever believe their narrative of this they're just gonna be laughed at for, for over and over again and you know if, if intergenerational polling is anything to go with their children are gonna laugh at them too yeah i mean on the start of it i mean on its face donald trump is absolutely going to be the republican nominee for president unless there's some extreme you know shenanigans involved some extreme fortifying you know the safest and most free you know, um, uh, uh, elections ever here. Uh, cause uh, I mean, what is he now? Like uh 60, 70%, like in the primary polls right now, like the next per- closest person is not even half of his score here. You know, like he, he's absolutely going to be the nominee, you know, which I guess brings up a whole other slew of questions, you know, unless are... the RNC pulls some shenanigans to rule him out from being on the ballot. The, 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 the thing about the, so the thing about the RNC, even though the top guys, the guys on the ballot boxes hate Trump and they just like say little weasel words to pretend like they're on his side. The thing about the GOP is that the, the lower rank people in the field actually do like Trump, like like uh, people like our age group. They actually do like Trump. And this is a situation where, oddly enough, the GOP is captured by Trump at the lower level, but not at the top level. Yeah, it would probably destroy their party, too. Maybe they don't care about that. I don't know. It's 
it's really weird. But yeah, it's like uh, there's there's no way you can actually. What what could DeSantis possibly say or do at this point that would put him ahead of Trump? Like, I I don't. I, I, can't I would think I, I can't would, fathom anything. I think one thing to point out here is the response that all the other candidates had in response to this. Uh, number one, uh, Mike Pence, press S to spit oh, uh, in the chat yes. um, at, um, uh, oh. at Mike Pence, who gave the most backstabby answer you could ever expect um, from that guy, basically, you know, playing into the entire regime narrative, like, this is what happens and nobody's above the rule of law and all this stuff. It's like, okay, yeah, uh, again, S to spit for Mike Pence. Um, DeSantis had a completely like milk toast. You know, uh, response to it, like I haven't seen like the internal documents yet, and things like this. Like he's trying to see, like, oh, we're gonna see what happens. Like the system was gonna do what the system does, and I'm gonna save my opinion for that. Which, again, as far as I'm concerned, probably sank his entire campaign right there. You know, it's just completely ridiculous and absurd response. Well, I I had to say that one of the things that might I don't know how this would happen, but you have to get every GOP candidate. To basically say we're gonna like if Trump goes to prison and I get elected, I'm I'm granting him amnesty. I'm I'm getting him out of jail. That's something you have to get every single GOP candidate to say as a default. Not only does it cert- like like cement the fact that Trump took over the party, it kind of permanently severs them from any hope of like appealing to the left on this issue. Um it's something that has to be done at the local level. You basically have to go to your local GOP meeting and say, listen, I want to hear the candidates say, if I win, Trump's getting released from prison if, if he's not the candidate, if he's not the guy. Uh, I That has to be something that, that has to be like a, a, a bare minimum of like creating a like a, a fort, a, a right wing, a red, a red fortress, basically. Yeah, I mean, one of the points we were talking about earlier is like how you can actually get involved and uh, do things in this level. Like, guys, it's it's primary season. You know, there's there's going to be these politicians having like town halls and moving all over the country. And a lot of them are going to be either streamed or televised in some way. And they will take, you know, questions from the audience and stuff. This is a prime opportunity for guys like us to get our narrative out there. I mean, you kind of yeah. saw this on um, some degree with uh, the Blaze TV event that went on a couple of weeks ago. What was it like in Iowa or Wisconsin or something like that? And our boy, um, Aaron McIntyre was there and was talking, you know, our kind of language at these events, you know. So it's uh, we definitely have some and- degree of impact in this regard. I also want to point out, like, something that the left does is they will go to retirement homes, they'll go to freaking insane institutions, and they will just get signatures from the people there. What you can do right now, from now into the primaries, go to your local retirement home, befriend a bunch of old boomers whose sons abandoned them, and promise to bring them, like, bring them to the voting booth on on November. Befriend them and take the responsibility now, because those are just like people that will vote for who like cares about them, because their children obviously abandoned them in the house. Uh, you can befriend those people. And hey, you, you'll actually make a lot of serious friendships with them. Don't just use them, but actually get to know these people and be a, like a, like an actual like n- no gentleman. <laughs> Don't be like the, the rough on the road. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have uh, another super chat um, uh, came in here from uh, Based Autism. Great name. Uh, for one ninety nine. he says, can we appreciate the star-studded lineup here? Yes, indeed. Um, we have a great lineup of uh, guests here tonight. Uh, for Pony Express Radio, we have the best men, the top men, uh, to discuss all the goings on in American news. Um, so, gents, uh, any other concluding thoughts here on uh, the Donald Trump uh, indictment and all these things? Obviously, we're going to be uh, watching it very closely over the next uh, couple months here. But um, any other closing thoughts here? Well, I mean, I think that if it, if it makes it so that he can't run, um, if some kind of charge if something happens um i i don't know what happens to the gop after that it looks like it could uh i mean it go back to the nikki haley's and the uh the mitt romney's of the world and if that happens there's a whole base that is um that's not going to like that and is going to be looking for something different and you know what that is is anyone's anyone's guess but um i think there is there is opportunity for somebody to step up and somebody who is uh more on our side and speaks more of our language 
Yeah, you're certainly right on um, uh, that front there, Pete. Um, it's definitely going to be very interesting uh, what the, happens to the GOP when Trump no longer can uh, run for office, whether it's after this term because of age or they just simply prevent him from running or whatever it may be. Um, it's going to be very interesting uh, to see what the GOP does uh, afterwards because, you know, I mean – people have seen this take going around before on uh, Twitter and I've definitely voiced my opinion on this multiple times and I'm sure you guys agree, but uh, it, I just find it a little sketchy that um, uh, DeSantis, you know, basically had the entire party in his back pocket uh, for 2028. All he had to do was just sit on his ass for uh, four more years, but uh, decided to uh, take a pot shot at uh, Donald Trump here. And it just seemed to me like very bad tactical choice, um, you know, at the very least, if not outright um, containment or, you know, at the worst. So it's, uh, I don't know, it'll be interesting to see what happens because uh, where does the party go uh, after Trump? You know, it's not like he has uh, named a uh, successor, so to speak. So it'll be interesting to see. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, we have another super chat here. Um, uh, Chris Renab here, uh, 199. Thanks for the stream. Well, thank you uh, for joining us, uh, sir. Um, we'll definitely have uh, plenty more coming here uh, every Thursday eight o'clock uh eastern standard time so uh be sure to uh tell your friends and all that good stuff so um any other thoughts guys on um uh trump and everything like this nope i, right. I just think that I, I i just think that this is a um the left is still spurring its wheels trying to figure out how to er- erase the ideas or, uh, rather they're trying to erase the man without thinking about how to erase the ideas and i, I don't think that they're going to accomplish anything i think they're literally wasting all their political capital trying to undertake the impossible you can't erase the ideas the man has unleashed yeah it certainly seems that way um for sure um, we got another super chat here um from mana negro for 4.99 uh gop without trump is the party of based immigrationism well <laughs> this is true. <laughs> so true yeah well you know, it, that, I'm sure that'll be a uh, a hot topic around the election, of course, as always, because uh, that's certainly one issue that's never going away. So, all right, Chance, if there's nothing else, um, uh, we'll go around the horn here and uh, wrap this one up. Um, Mr. Mandrill, anything to promote, sir? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, let's see. I just got uh, on my own personal Substack stack uh, a review of John Wick 4. So if that interests you, you can go check that out. Obviously, uh, you can check out my work on the OGC Substack. stack. Uh, when I do write for them. Uh, so, yeah. Excellent. Um, uh, Charlemagne, what do you got, sir? Uh, I've got an article coming out on our old Glory Club Substack on Monday. I've got a stream tomorrow, Saturday, on my channel at uh, 8 EST with uh, Mandrill on it, as well as uh, the Prudentialist, uh, Marcus Furious, Pertinax, and Semi Agog should all be there in order to uh, review this uh, NATO show called Perun. He's this total dweeb, and we're going to look at some of his videos and uh, his methodology in uh, propaganda. So that should be pretty interesting. And and we'll look at some of his claims as well. Uh, So tune into that tomorrow night. All right, cool. Excellent. Um, uh, Pete, uh, anything to promote, sir? Yeah, the Pete Quinona show, um, three episodes a week. And um, I just put out an article on the old glory club Substack yesterday on what I believe my interpretation of the two Americas using my experience of living in two vastly different places. So, um, check that out. Yeah. Excellent. And, um, our special guest, uh, tonight, uh, Mr. Cringe Walker, sir, do you have anything to promote? Yeah, I, I'm writing a few things on Substack recently. So I'm probably have a few more ideas to write out. Um, mostly revolving around the classic poets in Rome, which I've been going through and very much enjoying. Uh, That's alethemp, or just alethsubstack.com, or I think it's, you'll link in the video, I'll send it to you by DM, but uh, it's alethemp at at Substack. Uh, My Twitter recently hit 10K, so thanks everybody. Uh, I'll try to keep art going. I've been kind of lazy on the art direction of stuff. Uh, and I'm also shutting down the Telegram for the Restoration Bureau because I want to get off of Telegram. Uh, but I'll be moving it to Substack too, so it's not disappearing. It's just being moved. Um, that's about it. All right. Uh, fantastic. And, yeah, definitely check out um, uh, uh, your artwork uh, for sure. It's fantastic. Um, 
you know, definitely enjoy it. So people uh, should definitely be promoting uh, Cringe Walker's work. Well, um, thank you, uh, gentlemen, for coming on. Uh, for myself, uh, check out uh, my own channel. Um, I did uh, Man's Hour uh, just before this show. We were talking about um, uh, alcohol and all that stuff and uh, the virtues of it and the fun times to be had and all that good stuff. So if you guys are interested in – oh, and also we had a, a guy on who uh, brews his own beer. So if anyone's getting interested in looking into brewing beer, uh, you can learn about all fun stuff on that stream. So, But uh, thank you, chat, for uh, coming by. We'll see you guys um, uh, next Thursday. Uh, check out the Old Glory Club Substack. Reach out to us on the Old Glory Club email if you're looking to uh, hook up with other Anons or set up a Old Glory Club chapter. We have some very exciting news coming out on that front very, very soon, so stay tuned for that. But until uh, next time, uh, we'll see you guys around. Be well. Mm -hmm.